B requires you to use the value of the day total determined by the day, the determine day total method that we just wrote. Call the is confirmed method to determine whether the school can be included in the aquarium uh, on the selected date or not. If the school is allowed, calculate the amount. So there's a lot happening in this method. There's a lot happening here. So let's take this in stages, right? Let's take this in stages and try to understand what is required. The first thing to take note is we wrote a function. We wrote a function called determine day total for a particular date. We wrote a function called determine day total for a particular day. They are saying use the value. We need to call up this function. They want us to call up this function, right? The method as a parameter and call thereafter. So let's, let's, let's look at it. I need to call up the determine day total. But the determine day total wants a parameter for which date do you want to determine the total? Well, I want to determine the total for the date that the school I've input is going on. So how do I get my current date? Through my object, I call, there's a get date function. So I call the get date function. I store that in a variable. S date is just a local variable. So that is the date when the school, my school, wants to go to the aquarium, right? That is the date, that's my attribute. This is returning my object, the, my attribute values. So it's the school that I input together with the date that I want to attend. Once I've got that date, I send that date into the function determine day total. Determine day total will check this date against the text file and determine on the same date, what is the total number of people that are attending the aquarium on that same date that I would like to go on. And it returns the total. That is returned in a variable called a day total. I then check the is confirmed. This was in my user defined class. We wrote a method called is confirmed. So, I call it through my object, I send in the day total. And this day total checks whether it exceeds 500 or not, you will recall. If it exceeds 500, it'll return false. If it's less than equal to 500, it will return true. And if it does return true for this day total, it means that yes, the school can attend on this particular date. Great, if they can attend, then the next step would be is to calculate the amount, calculate the amount. The amount is calculated. It requires two parameters. These two parameters, if you read the question carefully, it says in the note that the cost per person and the cost of the tour guide are declared as constants. So these is a constant section. So these are constants. Um, that we are using from our constant section. We send in those values that calc amount once, it gets the answer and that total amount is returned in that variable called total amount. And a message is just displayed. That message is displayed in the way that the question wants us to display it with the school name. Uh, remember that I will get the school name using the get function. So there will be, uh, well, actually the two string will do that for me because it's got everything the way we want it. So just calling the two string function will give me the first three lines or the first four lines and then calling the, and then displaying the total amount with the heading amount to be paid will give me the last line that needs to be printed. So that's what happens when the day total when the students can be accommodated on that date. 
The else then means that they could not be accommodated on that date, right? They could not be accommodated. In other words, is confirmed returns false. So that means we need to say there is no space on that date selected. There it is here. If the school visit, if the school cannot visit the aquarium on the selected date, display a message. Then you need to show a particular panel. This panel needs to be made available. There it is. Let's make that panel now available using the show method. And then test, test all the dates in the list box for availability using the determined total and the is confirmed method. So what they want us to do now is there is a series of dates. If I go back to my uh, form, there is a series of dates. So if we selected one particular date, and if that date was not available, we now need to check all the other dates to see if they are, if any of those dates are available for that number of students, let's assume we entered 100, for that number of students, whether it's available. And if it is available, then that date needs to be put into this combo box. If I find the second one available, that needs to be put into this combo box. So effectively, I'm gonna run a loop and I'm gonna check each date. I'm gonna determine the date total. I'm gonna check if it is confirmed availability is true. And if it is true, I'm gonna add it into this combo box. So let's look at how to go about writing that part of the solution. There it is. A loop is being run from zero to four. There were five dates, if you noticed, in, that was given in the list box. Um, so I'm deliberately starting the loop at zero because I'm working with a list box. And in the list box, the first value in the list box, it has the index of zero and then one and then two. That's how a list box works. So I'm going to use I. And as I changes, when I is zero, I'm looking at the first item, I'm getting the first item. When I changes to two, I'm looking at the second item and so forth as the loop changes. So the first time around, I get the first date. I take that date, I repeat the steps. I repeat the steps that I just did here. I get the day total. I determine the day total for that date. I then check if it is confirmed for that day total if it's equal to true. If it is, then I add it into the combo box. Right? There's a property called items.add. I take the date that I was checking. That's the same date that I was checking. And I add that into the combo box. And this happens five times altogether. And for each of those dates, I determine the date total. And if, it's, if the number of students can be accommodated for that date, then it's added into the combo box. So that was quite um, a lot that was required for this question. But if you broke things up carefully, it could then you'd notice it uh, wasn't as bad as it may have first appeared to be. Let's now look at the last question, confirm new date. If alternative dates are displayed in the combo box, that's the ones that we just wrote now, a user must select a date. So from the combo box, the user needs to select a date. Uh, the program must set the date to the object. So if, remember that the combo box, we would have written dates into the combo box. So if the count in the combo box, if the items that count in the combo box is greater than zero, it means that it contains some available dates. If the items that count was equal to zero, then it means that there were no dates, and we then need to say that the school request, the school's request to go on the excursion was unsuccessful. 
because we couldn't find a successful date. But if it is greater than zero, there are other possible dates, then the first part says the, the youth, they need, the school needs to select a date and the program must set the date as the date in the object. So we use the set visit date that becomes our new date that has been selected. Remember that this date is selected. The user would have selected this from the combo box. I call the set the mutator method to change. Remember that's a procedure to change to the new date. I call the calc amount, right, with the total number. These were constants. That's the amount that needs to be paid. And then I just display all of that information in a show message box as is stipulated with the way they want the information. This will conclude the solution to, for 2.2.3 and the solution for this paper. I hope this has helped.